How I use class jobs has changed over the years for me, but in this video, I'm sharing how I currently use class jobs, how it helps my students with responsibilities, ties into our classroom management system, and frees me up from having to do all the little things. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Rachel Vincent, and I share tips on how to run an effective and efficient classroom so that you can thrive as a teacher. One of the big things that changed for me with classroom jobs is every student has a job. I first started out teaching where I just had a handful of jobs and students rotated, but I honestly just couldn't keep up with who had what job from week to week. Then I tried having just one helper a day, and that worked really well, except I realized I wanted my helper to do a lot of things and it was just too much for one kid. So now every student has a job. Some jobs require more than one student, but most of the jobs one student can do. And I really like this because it gets the buy-in and responsibility to our entire class so they know that we are a family. We work together to take care of our classroom. Another thing that has really helped me is not switching as often as I used to. To be honest, I don't have a set time of when we switch. It's usually about six to eight weeks. And it's usually when my students are saying, Miss Vincent, when are we gonna switch jobs? But the reason I like doing this is yes, it is easier for me to keep track of who has what job, but it also allows a student to get good at that job. If they only do it for a day or a week every so often, they don't ever become successful at doing that job. And so when they have it for longer, they can learn it better and make it work better for them. What I also like about not switching as often is that I only have to teach the students how to do the job one time. At the beginning of the year, I model, I show the kid how to do the student, and then they have that job for six to eight weeks and master it. So that when it's time for a new student to have the job, they train the student how to do their old job. And I don't have to do it anymore, and it gives that responsibility to the students. My students get paid to do their jobs. We use Class Dojo as our behavior management system. They collect points and spend it in our class store. So they get paid based on their job. Some jobs are harder and so they get paid a little bit more than a job that's a little bit easier. So for instance, the maintenance crew who has to do a little more cleanup, their job's a little dirtier, they get paid more than the electrician who just turns the lights on and off each day. What has also helped me with the class dojo side of things is oftentimes, especially as we get going in the year, I just don't give out points as often as I probably should. And so some of our jobs actually reward other students for doing a good job. We have bathroom monitors and they choose one student who, had, who did really good, had great behavior in the bathroom to award them a dojo point. Like I said, after I teach students how to do the job at the beginning of the year, our class jobs are very much student-led. One of the jobs we have is called Role Manager, and they are responsible for making sure everyone does their job. So it takes the pressure off of me because it's for someone else. In the next clips, I am in the classroom and I'm going to walk you through all the different jobs we have and all of their responsibilities. Our class jobs are called leadership roles in our school since we are a leader in me school. So we have a volume monitor that just helps make sure we are staying on the right volume. Our absentee aid helps organize papers for students who are absent. And our library crew just makes sure our library stays neat and organized. The hallway monitor is looking for students who are following directions in the hallway to award a point to. Our door supervisor holds the door and makes sure it closes. When our class needs to go somewhere, the electrician is choosing the color for our LED lights and then turns our lights on and off as we enter and leave the classroom. Dismissal supervisor awards a point to tables who do the best job cleaning up at the end of the day. Our teacher's assistant helps with any jobs that need additional help and then helps me in any way. Our cubby supervisor gives a point to students who have clean cubbies. Lunch supervisor writes our lunch choices on the board and then moves our numbers at the end of the day. And then the pencil manager sharpens pencils. The aesthetic assistant helps us make sure our pillows and stools are all cleaned up at the end of the day. We have a boy and girl bathroom monitor to award points to, and the whiteboard manager changes the date and erases the board. Our technology specialist has a charger for our Chromebooks, and the maintenance crew takes out the trash and sweeps at the end of the day. Table manager organizes our cubbies. Paper passer passes out paper. 
the payroll assistant records points from other jobs, and then our role manager makes sure everyone is doing their job throughout the day. Students fill out a job application for a couple of reasons. It, one, it lets me know the jobs that students really want, but it also allows me to know what jobs they don't want. I got this from Miss West Best, and I'll link it below the video. I also like it because it also gives real-world experience for filling out an application. After all the applications have been turned in, I go through and highlight everyone's top five. My goal is to always get them one of their top five choices. I generally can do it, but sometimes I have to go into the sixth and seventh, depending on the class and what job students want, because typically they all tend to want the same jobs, and then I will circle the job that they are going to get for that time. Once I have chosen all of the jobs, then I put it on this chart here. This just helps me make sure I have a person for each job because there have been times where I forgot about a job because nobody wanted it, and so it helps me to figure out which jobs have people and which ones I need to find someone for. Several of our jobs get little spreadsheets to document who is earning points and who is doing different things. This is our role manager sheet and they document students who complete their job each day and then it has a list of their payments for the week so I know what how to pay students when I go into Class Dojo to pay them for their jobs. The technology specialist will mark off students who uh, need to charge their Chromebook so I know not to give them a point. Students get points for not having to be reminded to charge their Chromebooks at home, but she also has a Chromebook there in case somebody does. This is our cubby checklist. They mark off students who have an organized cubby each day to get a dojo point. Then we have our book box checklist. This is the library crew and they mark off students who have neat and organized book boxes and who don't need reminders to return them to the correct shelf. Our volume monitor marks off students who may not be at the right level so that I can give points to students who are at the right voice level. The payroll assistant will actually mark down who earns a point for the bathroom, cafeteria, and hallway from those jobs. They go to the payroll assistant and tell them and they mark it down throughout the week so we can award them accordingly in Class Dojo. And finally, we have the dismissal supervisor who marks off the tables that do a great job cleaning up at the end of the day and putting away all their supplies so that they can earn points as well. If you'd like to learn more about how I use Class Dojo in conjunction with our class store, click on the video that's on your screen now to learn more about that.